generation, particularly for new multimedia applications at Intelsat, located in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. John and Fabian for bringing me here and accommodating me here to speak. Um, this was, LACNIC was brought to our attention through the CDM World Forum and the things that Hernan and Fabian did at the CDM World Forum. Um, very glad to be here because it's important for Intelsat to be here. Intelsat, as you'll see, uh, represents uh, delivery of uh, programming for many, many television providers and media providers and uh, we believe can help with Latinic and in Latin America providing higher quality and more traffic programming in various formats into the region. So I want to thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, excuse me. Okay, thank you. Gracias. So just only two slides on Intelsat, so you know who Intelsat is. Um, Intelsat is the largest provider of satellite communications. We build them, we design them, we build them, we put them into space, we operate them, and we provide services to um, a variety of customers, including media customers, all across the world. We have over 50 satellites in space today. We have the broadest range of coverage across the planet. And we are one of the only suppliers that also has a terrestrial network to complement our satellite network. And we have over 36,000 miles of fiber, which help us bring in feeds from various media companies to our teleports, which then we can distribute all across the world. Um, just a couple other statistics. We have 29 satellites today that uh, we call media neighborhoods. These are satellites that work across the world, including in Latin America. And as a media neighborhood, there's many, many, many antennas that are already pointing to those satellites that represent distribution throughout the region. Um, included with that, we not only distribute to pay TV operators, we also lease whole satellites, including to DirecTV Latin America, which provides pro programming all over Latin America. Um, and as you can see, today we deliver over 5,000 channels of television programming, nearly 700 in HD. Now this is, tran this is traditional television channels, but what we're looking at today and what I'm going to speak about today is how we can also deliver a variety of other formats into the region. Okay, just two, a couple of slides with some statistics. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them, but I'm going to show the focus of where this discussion is about. As you can see here from these two slides, um, people who provide over-the-top services perceive that there is a great revenue opportunity associated with over-the-top services. The, the um, statistic on the left are for for media companies in general and if they perceive over-the-top services as a viable revenue opportunity. The statistic on the right shows that for those who are delivering over-the-top services today, that they very much perceive that there's revenue potential with over-the-top services. Um, just a couple of things I want to point out. Um, what are the most significant technical challenges? And I just want to point out the two points on the left hand side that having to deliver having to do with delivery of quality of service and the amount of, amount of bandwidth required so these are technical challenges that over the top um, providers are experiencing today all throughout the world including in Latin America and these are uh, technical challenges that I'm going to talk about a little bit in this discussion From these two, two statistics here, I'd like to point out um, what are the most important performance factors. You can see on the left that the second most important performance factor is buffering. Buffering is that which occurs if you're watching streaming media over the internet and your little spinny wheel comes up and you must wait before you can see the rest of your video. That's buffering. And on the right hand side, I point out latency performance is the most important 
performance factor. Latency being when you request a video and the amount of time it takes for your video to start. Um, for example, there's a company out there that provides analytics. They're called Conviva. They do quarterly reports. I suggest that you go look at their quarterly reports, which are free. They will show you very much for certain levels of latency and for certain levels of rebuffering how much the audience goes away, how much they leave if those are performing poorly. So it's, it, it's an important factor and associated with over-the-top services and the ability to generate revenue. Now what I'd like to start to focus in on is the importance of live linear programming, either live sporting events or linear programming like television broadcast channels. These are very important to media companies to be able to deliver them as over the top and you can see from these two statistics that how important those are. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, much of over the top services delivered today are on demand services, uh, a large majority of them and also that which is revenues are earned through subscription um, the second thing is that most terrestrial networks today, the largest included, can deliver on-demand services pretty well, I say very well in many cases, and they've created a viable industry for the media programmers and the media suppliers. When it comes to live linear, both live events such as FIFA World Cup and linear, linear channels that may be delivered over the internet, um, the current infrastructure today, that which is provided by commercial CDNs and over the internet, it has limitations. It has limitations in delivering live and linear and especially when traffic scales up. These are the areas where we are applying focus as Intelsat to be able to help provide a higher quality of service, a more consistent and reliable quality of service and that which could support the media companies not only not only providing live linear programming over the internet but now with an advertising based model an advertising based model is what lar the large cable programmers have earned many, much revenues with and which they foresee over the top programming as also having potential to earn a lot of revenues uh, with but this will require delivering a high quality of service that's consistent and a few other factors which I'm about to discuss. So one other statistic and then we'll get on to the concept. Here you can see the importance of the business model and currently even though a majority of over-the-top programming is delivered as on-demand, advertising-based is just as important to subscription-based. And I'll repeat myself here um, although on-demand and subscription-based is a very viable part of the industry, the potential, if live linear can be delivered, and live linear can be delivered with a quality of service that maintains viewers, keep them engaged throughout the programming, including the advertising, the revenue potential is much, much greater. Our customers, Intelsat's customers, the media suppliers realize that, and they're asking us to find a way to be able to reach that, that level of service. And we're here today because to reach that level of service not only requires things that we can do, but will require cooperation with a community such as yours. Okay, so a little bit of background. When we say over-the-top service distribution, this is when a media supplier wants to go direct to their consumers. They want to originate the content and they want to go direct to the consumers. They want to own the experience. They want to own the analytics. They want opportunity to upsell. They want to have a direct relationship. Um, that is able to be done by terrestrial CDNs today. Um, but terrestrial CDNs today predominantly rely on the internet. And the internet as we know, other than the tier one backbone, is a network of networks. It can have many suppliers involved, many of them in this room. And 
as well this is a, this is a point which I've repeated today the internet and the commercial CDNs were able to make a viable business with on-demand services oops sorry so and what we've seen also with live and linear events such as the FIFA World Cup such as the Olympics that multi-screen services over-the-top services haven't been able to draw mass audiences that's good and that shows potential for the ability to draw mass audiences through over-the-top services that which could be served by advertising um, so but what what we have seen or what we understand and through our own research and research of others that live linear services can be difficult to be maintained at a high quality of service consistently and reliably especially when traffic scales up and when it's very large and for um, for advertising models it's very important that the quality of service remains high I'll refer back to Conviva who I mentioned who has analytics reports they would show you that with just within the first four minutes if a viewer experiences even two or three rebuffering events they will tune away so if that's a pro if that's a program that a media customer has sold advertising into that may have lasted 30 minutes 60 minutes they lose a large portion of their audience within four minutes if there's much rebuffering going on and the Conviva report will show you an exact statistic to that and it's pretty amazing how many people will drop off after just a few rebuffering events so it's very important for live linear services and an advertising based model that a high quality of service can be maintained as well as another factor which I'm about to discuss so let's talk about the challenges just as I said, the, the advertising-based live linear model requires a quality of service that's consistent. It's consistently high. M maybe it's only as good as what uh, the terrestrial providers, the large terrestrial providers of today can provide, but it must be consistent. It must be reliable. It must be that which keeps the, con the viewer engaged. Along with that, in today's environment, with the CDN suppliers, the commercial CDN plot suppliers, majority of their models today are based on variable costs. They consist of a component of how many viewers are viewing and also how much content is consumed per viewer. It's highly variable. A model like that cannot support an advertising-based model because the costs vary and advertising is sold. Media companies cannot project their revenues or if they'll even earn any revenues so the current model today with the terrestrial CDNs is not conducive to supporting an advertising based model for over the top associated with this managing the costs at the handoff points for, for distribution into the last mile the peering costs and also also managing quality of service of the streams that are being handed off into the last mile those are a predominant key factor into making uh, successful live linear advertising based models for over the top and that's partly why we're here today we think it's very achievable we think that we bring value we think we bring some value above and beyond what the terrestrial providers have associated with the unique attributes of satellite and we're here to introduce ourselves introduce our concept and to work together with you to further evaluate these concepts okay so a big part of the, the peer, managing the peering costs and managing the bandwidth for a consistent quality of service has to do with where the content delivery networks edge is you might hear the word edge used quite a bit in associate social so, associated with commercial CDNs and quite often you'll hear an Akamai talk about their pops and that represents their edge or other commercial suppliers talk about where their edge is the location of that edge can play a significant role in controlling these costs and ensuring and ensuring quality of service so excuse me so i'm just going over these diagrams lightly but i'd like to make a point i'd like to introduce a concept 
and predominantly to show you the concept that we have in mind and certainly to get feedback as to the practicality of this concept. Um, here I'm just referring to an entire distribution chain associated with over the top. And we quite often refer to a first mile, we refer to a middle mile, and we refer to a last mile. The middle mile being made up of the tier one internet backbone, and also the con and then the connectivity from that tier one internet backbone to the last miles. And we refer to that particular segment as the local mile. And it, that's very much where more of the internet, the internet being the network of networks, uh, exists. And that's also very much where w we now um, need to address in terms of co uh, managing costs and managing quality service. In today's world, with many suppliers like in this room, when if linear services are to be distributed throughout a model such as this, and I'm looking down at the same slide you're looking up at, um, going through that local mile, even though service can be good, and even though service is continuous throughout, um, there's a lot of independent factors about how traffic is managed, how performance is maintained, and, and how quality of service throughout that local mile is achieved. And just like you experience with the internet today, any services, not just streaming media services, um, latency, the propensity to rebuffer, access to content, that can all vary. It varies by time of day, vary by how much traffic's on the internet, and various other factors. We need to address that if we're gonna provide live linear services at a consistent quality of service. So, here's the crux of our, con of our concept. And let me point out first, where am I pointing to? I wanna go back. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I want to point out, if you notice at the blue line at the bottom, that's all the public internet that's being spanned for distribution, all the way to the last mile. And that has all the factors that I just discussed. Now let's talk about a satellite company. Today as a satellite company, Intelsat, we put edge nodes in at the major media suppliers, and, and we're doing more and more every day. I mean, these are the HBOs of the world, the Discoveries, the Turners. We pick up direct from those media companies. We put them right on our terrestrial backbone. It's an entirely managed service. We put them up over satellite. Satellite has the unique attributes that it's a worldwide ubiquitous network. It's a private network. It's a managed service. Quality of service is maintained throughout SLAs are guaranteed, individual customers are discreetly managed. So in this model, it's conceivable that we could pick up streaming video, or we could pick up traditional television from the media company in the first mile. We can enc encode that to mezzanine formats, we can put them up over satellite, and we could drop them right at an ISP, or drop them right at an internet exchange point. And now we have an entirely managed service that has um, skipped over parts of the local mile where we have the internet and we have the network of networks and we're providing a completely managed service into the ISPs or the exchange points. So now we believe we we're, we're can ad address um, less of a reliance on the internet to get programming to the last mile and we can provide a managed service for a higher quality of service. Excuse me one moment. Okay, and with that, we, we hope to simplify the peering layer. In, at times, there might be multiple peering layers involved in getting from the middle mile, from the backbone, through the local mile, and to the last mile. In this concept, we hope to minimize the amount of peering segments, or if we can, get down to one, one peering layer, a single peering layer. And that's one of the goals that we have here today with this concept. Um, the second thing is now, overall, then we're, we're reducing the variabilities of the internet. We're, we're creating a privately managed service to the last mile. So now as we talk about premium programming, and we talk about, I'm talking about the HBOs of the world, the Discoveries, the Turners, the ones that have premium programming, television broadcast programming, 
that they would love to be able to distribute over the internet if it's secure, if it's reliable, if it's consistent, and from that be able to create a multiplicative of advertising outlets on a, on a per country basis or even better. So it's very important that we can help them get to mass audiences and support their advertising based models. And as I just mentioned, these could be 24 by 7 linear channels. And imagine that. This is premium programming that's going to drive a lot of traffic, attract a lot of viewers, and on top of that, in some cases, will be 24 by 7. That's 24 by 7 bandwidth that needs to go through your last miles. It needs to be serviced by you as ISPs. We hope you see this as, a, as much of a benefit as we do. Okay, and here's just a, couple, a, a quick example. Um, there's a company called Nielsen, which measures viewership in the television industry, and that has something to do with how, how much advertising is sold for. And they quite often make measurements. They call it the average TV household minute. And that's so for a particular channel, for an average TV household minute, how many viewers are they attracting? In the top 10 programming networks, um, those channels can average anywhere between 500,000 viewers in an average TV household minute up to one and a half million viewers in an average TV household minute. Now that's for traditional television. Now imagine a 10% penetration of over-the-top services to second screen devices. So for one channel then that would be between 50,000 viewers and 150,000 viewers. That's for one channel. Now imagine each of the programmers might be providing multiple channels. And with that, imagine that for multiple programmers providing that programming, they may have overlapping events that happen to be successful or are surging. So as you can see, traffic will swell and could swell to some pretty significant numbers. We together, we need to figure out that relationship at that peering point so we can manage that traffic swell, not only to maintain quality of service, but also to manage costs. And that's why we're here today, to start that dialogue and start that discussion. And if we can come up with a smart resolution to that, and then as Intel sat, we go back to our media customers and say that's one area that we've addressed, which is very primary. There's a lot of benefit to that, which I'll summarize. So, now one other concept associated with this. The ingress into the last mile course must be managed efficiently, both to support a sound technical model and a sound business model for premium programming. So this is partly what the paper's about that this presentation is summarizing. On the left-hand side, this might be how we start. And satellite may drop off at the same peering point that commercial CDNs might today. Or, or at least where their programming enters your last mile networks. But satellite is not tethered to fiber. It's not tethered to the accessibility of fiber. It's not tethered to the economics of fiber. So we could treat our middle mile in the same way that you treat your last mile as a unified segment. If we need to distribute deeper into the last mile network, in this example, instead of going to a single point, of entry into the last mile network. Maybe we do half the traffic into a secondary point and half the traffic into another secondary point. If you can start to understand what I'm saying here, we have a unified scaling architecture. We can work together. We can create a ceiling of uh, bandwidth management here that can always handle large swells in traffic and handle those efficiently. And we can ease the ingress into your last mile. If we can ease the ingress into your last mile, um, as you probably know, qu quite often the last mile will get associated with where the quality of service um, is waning or where it's, it's not working well. But if we can ease the, the amount of ingress into your last mile network, we can help to stabilize the quality of service even in your last mile network. Okay, so here's the summary. Satellite networks are unique. They're homogeneous. They're ubiquitous. The service you get in delivered in Latin America is going to be the same service you get delivered in Australia. It's ubiquitous. So wherever the footprint is, in all of Latin America or beyond, it's, it's the same level of service. And it's a private network delivery. So we're overcoming the vagaries of the internet, at least for the long haul, and introducing it to the last mile. 
Um, multicast is, is, is key here for, for some reasons, associated with satellite service. Um, and you can't get multicast from terrestrial networks, not cheaply or not easily. And with satellite, it's naturally done. So if we're doing linear channels, we just found a way to not only streamline satellite costs, which solves a problem for us, but it streamlines costs in general for long-haul delivery of over-the-top services. And so now the economic factors that can be presented to the media customers will be greatly changed and, and, and much more attractive. So when we combine the, the advantages of multicast, along with if we work out something in this concept to minimize, to simplify the peering arrangements, simplify them in terms of bandwidth management, simplify them in terms of costs, being able to manage the costs, these are now great benefits to the media companies. And what they end up doing, I'm just going to skip, is they help to de-risk the media companies' business models. Right now, they, they, they would have trouble um, deploying live linear services and an advertising-based model over the top because of the current cost factors and the current quality of service. But by addressing those, we now de-risk that business model, and they can, they can now deploy that kind of programming. And if we do that here, we do that in Latin America, ahead of anywhere else, there's already popularity with the media companies to bring programming into your country. We had seven major announcements in 2014 with major media companies that want to bring programming into Latin America, and not just on-demand service, but they also talked about live linear. Now we can de-risk that model and let them push ahead with live linear in Latin America. And we could, we, together, we could be the first region in the world to do this. So this model is, is designed to entice the media companies to bring new premium programming, to push it over the top, to make their advertising models, which they would greatly want, and with that, bring increased traffic into the region. So. As Intelsat, we look forward to working with you. We want to discuss this concept. We want to evaluate it together. What we'd really like to do is, if, is we've created a system that helps meet our economics and our economic needs to do this. We have a system that's up and running. It's closed circuit. It's, it's within our labs, but uses a satellite. We'd like to put some downlinks here. We'd like to run a field trial. We would like to find participants that would accept the downlink and help us understand and learn about those peering points, how to manage the costs, how to manage the quality of service, and set a precedence for how, for how we can do that throughout the region. So we would love to talk to you more about it. We would love to find participants in a trial with us. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Alguna pregunta para Any questions for Mark? My name is Leslie Lam, and I'm from Belize, the country of Belize in Central America and the Caribbean. Um, okay. Sure. Okay. I work for a company in Belize named Belize, Telecom Belize Telemedia Limited. It is the premier telecommunications company in Belize, and we have about um, 90 to 95% of the internet market in Belize, and we also have a fiber network throughout the country. We have been exploring the, um, the option of, uh, of, of deploying this type of service in our country, this over-the-top service. However, um, the problem that we have is that, um, looking at the business model, the problem that we have is that our cable companies are actually bootlegging the signal from the United States. And so our cable companies have over, well over 100 channels, HBO, Cinemax, all the, um, all the major networks in the U.S. And they, they, our cable companies get the feed via satellite, and then um, they just redistribute it out to customers, uh, just paying for one single feed. And so they're able, they're able to offer well over 100 U.S. channels to our customers in Belize for 45 Belize dollars per month. That's like 22.50 U.S. per month. 
So the thing is now that um, we would like to offer this over the top service as a telecommunications company in Belize, but how do we justify it? How do we compete with the cable companies who are bootlegging the signal? Okay, I believe I understand the question. Um, that's certainly something we need to work at together. I know from our media customers, it's highly important that we provide a secure means to do this before they would even consider doing premium programming. How we compete, I'm not sure. How we secure, we're looking into that now. And other than providing a secure link to the ISPs, we are looking at technologies such as watermarking and fingerprinting, which once programming leaves our network and goes, if it's found to be used illegally, it can be traced back to where it was originated and there's ways of turning it off temporarily till you figure out where the leak is and there's ways of um, then tracking where it came from so you can hopefully find out who's stealing it so that's part of the equation as far as competing that sounds like something that would be between the media companies and the pay TV operators but I'm not sure okay because the main thing would be um Again, we're willing to offer the service to our customers. However, um, and I, I don't know if this situation is unique only to the country of Belize, but um, I don't know if it's happening in other territories, but it would just be impossible for us to, to compete with, with, with the cable companies who are, who are bootlegging the signal. Okay. So I'd like to say two things. Um, one is, as I said, there were seven major announcements last year that they're bringing programming into Latin America. Um, that's important because they, they, they must be aware of this before they would have made said announcements. Second of all, what the concept I discussed today, we, we are not an aggregator and we are not a redistributor. We are service suppliers to the media companies who want to establish business in your region. So they will be ones to come to you as either pay TV providers or ISPs who want to offer this kind of content and they would work out with you more directly how maybe to address that problem and I'm not walking away from it I'm just stating that we're, we're not the reseller we're not an aggregator we're only a service supplier to them so but I have to assume they've thought about this because the, of those seven major announcements they're moving forward with deploying in the region Okay, okay. muchas gracias Mark Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.